Priority this video is getting the coils in the front of the 79. Definitely be needing this high lift jack to do this job. Get a door back on the bullet. Just covering some of the surface rust. Old school, black around the glass. So here's the door. All good to go, just gotta finish off the inside skin. Beautiful, ready for more ox. We're gonna start by setting up the two inch EFS springs under the 79. What we're trying to do is gain height for the 35 inch treps. So I've completely removed the sway bar for this. It makes life a lot easier. I've also taken off my Mark's four wheel drive handbrake bash plate. Had a few big toes of late. Uh, we're gonna be replenishing the oils in the transfer gearbox and diffs with our Penrite oil. We've given the coils a bit of a color swap from the black, uh, match in with the Fox shocks. So next we're gonna take some measurements. We're gonna measure the height that we're at right now before we go and take the coils out. The couple of measurements I'm working with is I've measured the exposed amount of shaft on that Fox shock on both sides. My second reference point is gonna be a measurement, a plumb line up from the ground to the underside of the flare. We've got two sizes to work with. We've got the exposed shaft on the shock, and then we've got the plumb height. Now on this, they're both 98 mil exposed shock shaft, and I've got 1,010 millimeters on that plumb line. So let's start getting the coils out. Most front bars have them these days, but this TJM one does. Um, they're very handy, they're high lift jack points. So what we'll do is we'll set the high lift jack up to that and start lifting. In my situation, I've got no sway bar in and I've got the superior arms. So I haven't had to undo my shock, it's a long traveled shock. I've got the high lifty on there until the wheels come off. Now I know I can get my coil out because I've done this a few times before. So this is our TJM two inch one. Let's just compare heights on the ground. Just from underneath here, I wanna just make a point You've got to be careful these ABS lines. So that's quite taut, but uh, it's still okay. They're expensive. A lot of people do do damage to their ABS lines when they're changing over uh, suspension. But you can see how much travel I'm getting out of that shock. Now the other thing that makes it difficult to get the coil in and out for me, we made up these bump stops. So it's basically some billet aluminium that Brian machined up. He's drilled a hole and put a bolt through. Now what that bump stop does for me, it limits the up travel so I'm not, the tire's not destroying my inner guard, but also at full down travel, it stops the coil from wanting to come out of its seat. So it's very important that. Even in the comp trucks, we put bump stops in to limit up travel. Right, so let's have a look at these EFS springs. So there's not much difference in height overall, which is good thing because it means that I'm not gonna have to undo the shock to get the coil back in. This is the two inch heavy duty. Now, I said it earlier that all the accessories that we've got on the truck all come into the, the weight category that these springs can take. Now the three inch ones are a lot longer. So I'm probably gonna have to use spring compressors to crush these ones or undo the bottom of my shock and just see how much more I've got. But even if I have more, I've got brake lines and I've got steering arms that are gonna limit how much droop I can have. As you can see, it's a relatively easy job. It's not that difficult. It's just manipulating the coils to fit in. But you can see now what I mean. If I didn't have that bump stop there, this coil would be in and the three inch ones would be in as well. Now we'll carefully and slowly drop that high lift jack down. But EFS have been making the suspension for bullet truck for a few years now, all custom top leaves. I'm even using all that stuff on the Forerunner. You wanna keep checking that ABS line hasn't got caught in anything. That's the truck back on the ground. Coils in, position. Now I didn't expect to see any major height change with these two inch. Uh, it's basically the equivalent of the TJM. So that's the TJM heavy duty two inch. 
This is the EFS heavy duty two inch. Do the driver's side now and then take some measurements. So these are the 10 inch Fox shocks and I've had these probably three years now. I love them. I think they're the best. But my point here is I've got 250 mil of open shaft, hence the 10 inch shock. Uh, at ride height, I'm sitting at just under 100 mil, so that's six inches of down travel. If you are doing this at home, there's a spot on that seat that that part of the coil must sit in. That's how you know you're in the right location. So you spin it round until it stops spinning. But here again, you can clearly see what I'm talking about with that bump stop. So when the shock shuts up, the piece of billet that I made up squashes up against that the, the factory bump stop and limits the up travel. That's what saves us with the bigger tires. If I didn't have bigger, if I didn't have those bump stops there, I'd be scrubbing in the guards a lot. So when people ask me, do you get scrubbing issues on 35s? The answer is no, because of that bump stop. That makes such a big, important difference. And again, see what happens at full flex. That bump stop holds that coil from moving, from popping out. So if you can see in there, I've got the rock lights on, you can see there's probably only a 30 or 40 mil gap between my bump stop and the factory one. So in theory, they come up and meet each other and then they'll squash the rubber bump stop, the Toyota one, the top one. But it's gonna limit how much up travel I do get because I've decided to run that way and have the bigger tire. If I had a 33, I probably would have halved the size of that bump stop that I fitted to the bottom. All I want is down travel, and by those two meeting, it's actually forcing the other side down. We've learnt that with our leaf spring set up in the comp truck. You do need bump stops, they are very important. I'm going to take it for a run, come back, I'll put a mark on the ground, come back, park in exactly the same spot, and take some measurements. Driven around the block, I've parked up. These EFS ones, they've measured up 10 mil lower than what we had already. So the, the TJM ones are a heavy duty, I'm not sure, maybe they're weighted a bit differently to the EFS ones, but they were comfortable, they were good to drive on. The problem is I'm not going to be able to test the bigger tyres uh, with a smaller measurement than what I had. So we're going to have to try and get the three inch ones in. See the height difference there? I've got a pair of spring compressors there. I'm going to see if I can compress that spring with those baby spring compressors uh, to that length, then I'll be able to sit these in. I only bought these little guys to change out the coils in the back of Shell's Fortuna. So they're not really made for such a heavy duty coil, I don't think. But you know me, I'll do what I can with what I've got. We don't need much, probably 40 mil, 50 mil. I won't be able to paint these up. So these will just have to stay black. I didn't plan on putting these in, I wanted to really drive off-road with the two-inch ones. Uh, but I also, at the same time, I want to get those treps on. Unfortunately, my compressor's on a job, so that was a bit of punish doing that on uh, by hand. But we're in par now, so these should go in. Now using spring compressors, you've got to remember you've got the tower, you've got the shock. Uh, it's not as easy as not having them on. I think we're there, I think we might just need to lever it up a bit. Go. There's a spot there for it on the other side. You clear, see it more clearly, but that's where it wants to sit. So let's lower it down now, and that'll give us a gauge of a three inch, a light duty three inch. I think it looks like there's a little bit more clearance here. But we won't know until we do the other side, take it for a drive, and measure. So close. Got that on an angle. It's all happening. Definitely raising it. Yes, we got it. Well, we're in a safe spot anyway. So I've got to kick that coil in. That's it. We got it, guys. We got it. So once we drop the jack that's sitting on top of my bump stop, but it's all a mess up here, everything's hitting everywhere. Just a big coil. Here we have it. I'm gonna take it for a drive, pull up in the same spot, get some measurements. All right, it's a good sign, no ABS lights are on, so we haven't damaged any of the lines. Feels just as soft. 
coming out the driveway as it normally does. So we've got no sway bar at the moment. Oh good, just back. Now I've gained 20 mil all round. I've gained 20 mil on that plumb line measurement. I've gained 20 mil of shock shaft. They're pretty much straight up and down. Definitely gonna clear the traps now with that 20 mil because they're not 20 mil taller than these 315. So whatever I was hitting or not hitting before should be the same. Just worried about the square edge on the traps, whether at full lock it's gonna hit, it's gonna be any closer. These taper back, whereas the trap's quite square. Before I put the traps on, I might just drive it for the day. It is considerably taller by sight. Um, I might just drive it for the day on the razors, make sure there's no new wobbles at any particular speed. And then I can put the traps on and know that if there is any change to the steering or wobbles, not the suspension, most importantly. The little spring compressors came in so handy to think I was going to just throw them away after I'd put Shell's coils in. I'm going to keep them now. It feels no different at 80k. There's no, uh, no difference in, in the steering. I'm really happy with the outcome. I gained uh, about 20 mil of height, which is all I needed for these trepidors. It still drives nice. There's a little bit more body roll in it than it had with the 45 or 50 mil TJM ones, the heavy duty TJM ones. But that's only saying that I'm not running the sway bar at the moment. So when I had the TJM 50 mil ones on, it had a little bit of body roll, but this has got just that touch more. But we are 20 odd mil higher, which would explain it. Generally, I'll run the uh, sway bar when we're traveling, if I'm towing the van or the bullet truck in, uh, in tow. Uh, but it's generally when we're when we're doing our social social drives in the cruiser I'll, I'll take the sway bar off just for that extra little bit of travel Just helps with uh, with not lifting a wheel as easily as as it would another thing that's been plaguing my mind And it's sort of fixed itself is uh, just of late uh, my injectors have been quite rattly and um, It's I did think about it Caltex in my area have changed to Ampole so the vortex is now amplify uh, when they first initially changed over, I asked the attendant behind the desk there, I said, I, I did ask him, is the diesel the same? And he said, yeah, it's exactly the same. They've just changed the name. Um, and yeah, I did notice for a little while there, my injectors were quite rattly. On that last trip, we towed bullet truck down to six stage on the highway. It was, it was quite noticeable. The other day when I went to get the door up north, I stopped in at the Caltex there at the halfway house on the M1. And on the way home, I turned the radio down for a phone call and I left the radio off and the injector noise is gone. So I'm not sure if anybody else has had that similar uh, situation. I mean, I've always run the Vortex from the same servo and now it's changed hands and my injectors were rattly for a little bit. Uh, now they're different, they've come good again. So I might steer clear of that one for a little bit until I work out exactly what fuel they are running. In the next video, we'll be putting on the 35, 12 and a half, 16 inch treps. We'll go out for a day trip. Uh, we'll ramp it up here and there. We'll do some hills where it's going to articulate. I'm going to get some measurements. And then the same day, I'm going to be putting the sway bar back in and basically running the same tracks, the same lines. And I'm going to be uh, taking the measurement to compare what it would be like with and without the sway bar because the sway bar does limit travel but how much travel um and is it worth taking off for for you know your, your off-road adventures until the next one as always thanks for watching